Broadcasting worldwide from the beautiful hill country in Texas, this is OneRadioNetwork.com. Well, a very pleasant good morning to you. This is Patrick Timpone, and you've got OneRadioNetwork.com, OneRadioNetwork.com. It's the 18th of September, 2012. Yesterday was the 225th anniversary of the Constitution of September 17, 1787. 225 years. We are going to go down the road of the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, uh, with the work of Dr. Ed Rivera, which is really, I think, cool stuff, challenging to understand, but even if you ever, even if you never do anything with this information, I, I think it's, it's just um, cool and, and fascinating to know what's up with this. If for no other reason, just to understand that what you uh, understand about the formation of the United States, the United States of America, two separate places, I know, see, they're already, is really strange. Now, Dr. Rivera was going to call me right back. How are you, Dr. Rivera? We're on the air. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, fine. Got okay. my coffee. What, you got your coffee? Yeah. Well, I know it's early there. I was just telling folks um, that yesterday, the 225th anniversary of the Constitution of September 17, 1787. And I also mentioned that if, regardless of people never do anything with this information as far as, well, just, I think it's really interesting and powerful to know that what we understand, the formation of this government, the Constitution, and the authority of this government is nothing like we really understand it to be, is it, Dr. Rivera? No, it's not. It's, it's, it, it's uh, set up on a commercial system, which is, you know, business of America is business, but it's good to know that that's the way the government is set up. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, the Northwest Ordinance is, is so key in this, and it, this was a territory that was won by the United States of America in the war, correct? That's right, it's the spoils of war. The spoils of war, and it comprised the area that we know, give us the states that are generally in that Northwest Territory, Northwest Territory area. Uh, let's see, there's Iowa. Iowa. And there's Wisconsin, part mm -hmm. of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, Illinois, I believe, Indiana, mm -hmm. Ohio, Ohio. Oh yeah, Ohio. That's the that's the, that's the first one that becomes the state. Yeah. So this whole area was just kind of out there in La La Land, and the thirteen original colonies was was what we know as the Confederacy, right? That's right. The, or the first United. I'm sorry. The first confederacy. The first conf What does that word mean? The Northern Confederacy. What does a confederacy mean? It's a, a group of uh, people, a like-minded uh, entities, that uh, uh, throw the throw, in, throw themselves in a in an organization for a specific purpose, a huh. defense. It could be. It could almost be a neighborhood. You can have a confederacy with fifty families in your neighborhood or something. Yeah, like. confederates. Confederates. Yeah. Where but, did that word come from? From the uh, the uh, idea of federation. Federation. Federation is the is the main word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when the um, thirteen original colonies, these were the people that essentially got together and did the war with King George, right? That's correct. Okay, and then the spoils of war was this huge swath of land that I guess some. Before the war, Dr. Rivera, the, the, the um, King George thought he owned all this area, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio. He thought he owned it? 
Well, that's the way the monarchy works. It's his domain. Oh. And everybody on the property was his subjects, so uh, he, he ruled. He ruled. When, when, did, when did that ruling start? When, when did he say that I own this place? Well, that it goes back to the uh, English monarchy, the, back to the days where where uh, uh, warlords set themselves up as uh, as divine rulers, hmm. the head hmm. of the church. But are you talking a hundred, two hundred years, thousand years? Uh, just to give us thousand years. Thousand oh. years. Yeah. Well, that's pretty adventurous for being over there in in England. Back at that time, thousand years from seventeen the seventeen hundreds. I'm sorry. It was a thousand years from the 1700s back to Alfred and Ethelbert and Ethel, Ethel the Great and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where did they Alfred get the where, where did they get off coming across the ocean and claiming all this land? That was uh, the right of conquest. I see. The, the European idea that if you go out and uh, plant plant your flag on a place, it's uh, and uh, you shoot anybody that tries to take your flag down. That's just the way it was done, right? Just that's the way, that's international law. <laughs> right, right. Kind of like what the United States is, of America is doing today. Well, no, not exactly, because we don't claim the land. Oh, we just steal the money and oil and stuff. Well, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Or uh, take over the central bank, as they do in Libya. I see. Well, let's not go there. Okay, but this, this so this area known out there, Iowa, Wisconsin, and all that stuff, and the spoils of war, they, um, the Northwest Ordinance was created to put a little, um, put a little net around this whole area and have some laws and stuff, and that's in, in 1787? That's right, July 13th. 1787 is when it's passed. It's passed by Congress. It's, it's a, it's a the Congress, the Congress law. of the United States of America, the 13 colonies. Yeah. Okay. So they have a Congress over there. There was nothing going on in this land in Northwest Ordinance except a bunch of land with a bunch of people. And did they want to join into not this? a whole bunch of people? No, not a whole bunch of people. Did they want to join in this United States of America? Well, yes, they did, but they uh, there just weren't enough people to create a state. Uh huh. It was called the wilderness area. Sure, sure, sure. So, who created this article, uh, the, the Northwest Ordinance? Well, that was done by Congress, and of course, the, everything is done by by committee, even back then. Mm hmm. And so, uh, the these committees set up the uh, the legislation, and then Congress enacted it as as the ordinance. The, the municipal or local law for these this specific place. Because remember, uh, Congress couldn't make laws generally, but they could for this uh, area because it belonged to the United States of America. So, that's so, yeah, America. that's so fascinating what you just said. If you get this, folks, it's really key here. So this place, uh, the this um, 13 original counties, um, it was called the United States of America, and Congress couldn't even make laws for that area. No. They couldn't make any laws because the people were free. I mean, they just got rid of King George. That's right. Correct? That's right. Now, you correct me if I'm wrong here when I'm making these statements. So so they, they created this Northwest Ordinance so they could, they could do what? Well, so they could have a temporary government. In fact, the first thing you see when you look at the law, the ordinance, is that um, it's a it's it's creating a temporary government for this district? Mm -hmm. For this district of Illinois, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and all of that. So the, the district was the Northwest Territory. The the, uh, the states became uh, or were di were a division of that district. So the district was divided into states, mm -hmm. or just for the purpose of, of naming them. And to, and to determine how much population was in those states so that they could be admitted as states. So Ohio was the one that was first populated uh, sufficiently to become a state. Mm -hmm. And then they, they petitioned Congress to become a state. Who was Ohio? It was Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, yeah. 1803, I think. Okay. Now, here's what you wrote yesterday. Um, yesterday you wrote, this is the 225th anniversary of the Constitution of September 17, 
1787, the Constitution of the United States, George Washington um, officially swore to preserve, protect, and defend when he when he got sworn in, right, in 1789. And to the best of his ability to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, so help me God. So this Constitution that he swore when he took office was between the United States of America and this place now called the United States, which was the north, the territories in the Northwest Ordinance, correct? That's right. So he, when he took office as President of the United States, it had nothing to do, he had no authority over the 13 colonies, correct? That's correct. He only had authority over this new place called the United States. Uh, is that correct? That's correct. And that's the place that's formerly known as Iowa, Bob. You know, they became states. And this is called, these are called the United States. Well, they're united. They're all, they're all, they're all united. Together. Yeah. So you've got the United States of America over here. But he, he didn't take a, um, an oath to, to be president of the United States of America. No, because if you look at the Articles of Confederation that create the United States of America as a confederacy, yeah, there's no oath required because the, the, it's made up of states, and the states act on 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 it, and whatever situation they're uh, they're, they're uh, involved in uh, as states, as sovereign states, and it, and they specifically retain that uh, that uh, distinction of being sovereign. Sovereign. So they don't give up their sovereignty when they join this confederation. That's why they're confederates. They're equal. Mm -hmm. So what would be one of those 13 states? Maybe um, oh, the, New York. Delaware. Delaware. Okay, Delaware, pick, pick Delaware. So okay. Delaware, when they join this confederacy known as the United States of America, they're totally free, independent, and they've got... George Washington doesn't have any control over them whatsoever. That's correct. Okay, because why would they, why would they do that, right? Last thing they needed now is to have somebody telling them what to do. That's why they fought a war and hmm. made great sacrifices, or to tax Free. them, or whatever, right? So, t tell us what this whiskey rebellion, because this was really the first time where this whole thing got kind of, uh, hmm how do you say, not kosher, <laughs> right? Well, well what, uh, what, gover what does the government do but uh, tax and spend? Tax and spend. And uh, what, so what George Washington was trying to do was to create a, 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 a commercial entity that was viable. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to be able to, to tax. Sure. Because taxation is really just the same, the, the same thing commercially as making sales. Okay, you're a commercial entity rather than sell widgets. Yeah. The only, yeah. Your, your, only, your only business model is to tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, so the, the first thing that they tax is our imports, imports into the United States. So what I do is I provide the students with all the statutes that are enacted, or mo almost all of the statutes that are enacted uh, during George Washington's two administrations. Mm -hmm. Oh, the administration because they're administering their property. But let's be clear, they were taxing the imports to the United States. That's that Northwest Territory area. No, no. <laughs> okay, but well, they, you said United States, is not the United States of America. That's what, that's what the law says. That's why I give the students the law so they can actually see that the, the, it does say the United States. But they only have authority over the United States that are, that are the Northwest Territory. Well, that's what I just said, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, but yeah, it's got nothing to do with taxing imports coming into Delaware. No. Oh, okay. No, See, that's no, the key, isn't it? That's the key. But what they do is they set up custom houses in Delaware. Okay. Because everybody is confused. <laughs> so they got confused right away. Yeah, and the reason they get confused is because George Washington takes two offices. Mm -hmm. he, he becomes Before he becomes president of the United States, 
he is made president of the United States of America under the Constitution, which is a, a, a revision of the Articles of Confederation. Yeah, boy, that's when your head starts spinning, right? Yeah, yeah, because and the, so so what I do is I uh, explain to the students, look, you you have to remember the mm. date. The, the the dates uh, are, are are different for the taking of these two offices. April six, seventeen eighty nine is the date when George Washington is elected president of the United States because the process is different. The states elect the, uh, the, the president of the United States of America. And the same thing is happening right now. The process is going on right now with the, the election of this new president. So George uh, took president of the United States, which well, just for conversation we'll keep saying that was the Northwest Territory places, right? 1789. Yeah, yeah and exactly. Then and then when did George take the president of the United States of America? Separate, different. That was April 6, 1789. Oh, um, just not too long after. Well, no, the first, the, he first takes office as president of the United States of America, April 6th, and then April 30th he takes the oath of office for, the, for uh, president of the United States. Oh, yeah, so he's, like a, a he's, he's three weeks. very three, clever three, until they set three, up the Constitution. Yeah, three weeks later, he takes the deal for the president of the United States. Well, it's, uh, it's about two, week, two weeks oh, today. Okay, yeah, something like that. So, so here he has two different offices, president of the United States of America, president of the United States, which are two separate entities, correct? That's right. Hmm. Do you think the people knew what was going on here? No, no, I don't think so. I, I, I we don't. They don't have. Uh, they didn't have cable. They didn't have. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have How TV, radio, anything. But they had. Uh, they had uh, newspapers, which they got uh, weeks, days later, in the outskirts of well, the country. If if um, if the administration, this commercial entity wanted to tax imports into this formerly Northwest Ordinance called the United States, um, didn't people question it if they would set up custom houses in Delaware and other places called the United States of America? Well, I guess some of them did, and, and, but the, the, the government would give them uh, discounts for being citizens. So uh, the, the, the government is very clever. And they're, uh, they've always done this. They've always given benefits to people who would comply with uh, oh. voluntarily with their taxation. So if you um, if you claim to be a U.S. citizen, then you were given a discount on the imports, and then you, of course, uh, pass the cost of the of the import tax to the consumer. So they start out simple and uh, easy, and that's taxing stuff that comes into America. Would, but, didn't, that, but didn't the people who were in the United States of America, Delaware, question the whole idea of having any, any taxes? They were sovereign states, part of the Confederacy. They must have questioned that. Well, some of them did, but they, it did, that doesn't do much good to complain against the government at any time. Because what the, what the government does is they, they take hold of the ship <laughs> that comes in and requires the... the cargo to be unloaded into its warehouses so that it can determine who's who's who and who's how much they're going to pay for bringing these products in into um, the country all right so the uh, from the 1776 to 1789 and that it, the, the ink's barely dry on all of this and right away they're overstepping their boundaries what you're saying and wanting to figure out how to wait, how to tax these people who were in the Confederacy in the sovereign states that went to war to not be taxed. That's right. Pretty clever. It starts all over again. <laughs> Pretty clever, man. 20 years later, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Huh. So uh, tell about the Whiskey Rebellion because that's very interesting. So the the first thing they tax before they tax whiskey are, are vehicles, okay. carriages, uh, coaches, wagons. Uh, it's just like we have today a, re a registration 
licensing tax for vehicles that started way back in uh, 1791 with the uh, uh, carriage tax. Then, when that didn't produce enough money, they decided to tax the distillation of alcohol. But all their, all their laws can only apply to the territory that they own because the, the Constitution is not adopted as such because they, no one takes an oath to support this Constitution. The Constitution provides for taxation, but it, it, only, it, it, would, it would only provide taxation for property and activities that, that are uh, carried on in the United States in the territory that is owned by the United States of America. That's the key, and that's the that's way it the, is to this day. So, I mean, legally. Okay, but let's go back to the whiskey, because that's where the people really began to understand that they were being had. <laughs> well, they understood they were being had, but they didn't know how or why. How it was happening. And, and still today, people do oh, not of course, understand. Yeah. But you can imagine, though, 225 years ago, they had to be a little bit clearer about what was going on, wouldn't you say, Dr. Rivera? Well, yeah, but it didn't affect them. There was, it's not like the income tax. Sure. There were sure. A, few, a few farmers uh, had to uh, uh, convert their uh, uh, grain uh, crop into whiskey so that it, they, they could preserve what they had harvested. Sure. Because the, uh, the, the grain would, would spoil uh, over winter. Unless they converted it to uh, to alcohol, they could uh, e be sold uh, easily because it could be stored easily. Right, and it was in demand. Uh, so, so with uh, the Constitution, the pact between the United States of America, which George was, um, let's see, no, he was president of the United States, the Northwest Territory. He 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 had a way to tax the people in the. Uh, formerly the Northwest Ordinance, because they weren't state yet, right? That's right. And then, so he could tax their whiskey and get away with it, because that's the deal. That well, they, it was their property. It was their property. Remember, because, like, owning, owning property is, uh, is, is exactly like being a landlord. Okay, yeah. That's, they, they, that's what a landlord is, is a, a property owner. The United States of America owned this wilderness out there in Ohio, yeah. and they just said, okay, if you're going to make whiskey, we're going to tax you. And pretty much that's the deal, because they owned the United States of America, the 13 colonies owned this oh, no, property. They didn't own that. They, they, the, that's the, the states, remember, are sovereign and independent. The people own the land. Oh, the, the, pe the government oh, that's created by the, by the people. The people of the 13 the, colonies own the land. The government that should be uh, devoted to the protection of the people and, the, and their property. Mm -hmm. Which it is. That's the whole idea of the Articles of Confederation, is that they're going to preserve the uh, the country by defending it. Right. That's their main goal. Main goal. So they, George wanted to, he wanted to tax the people, the whiskey on the the in the United States of America in these thirteen. Well, that's where the money was. Yeah, that's where all the people were, right? Because there weren't any people. Right. There were so few people in the in the wilderness area, the, in the Northwest Territory. They would never be able to make any money there. Right. So, so then what did the people in the United States of America, these original colonies, what happened when they started to have people knocking on their doors saying, I want to tax your whiskey? Well, they got very angry because yeah. they, didn't, they didn't expect to be taxed. They fought the revolution uh, not to be taxed. And here somebody was trying to tax them for something that they thought was their uh, their business. Right. A business that had nothing to do with the government. Right. But alcohol was traditionally taxed in, in uh, the making of alcohol was traditionally taxed in every uh, government that's a, that's a monarchy. It was taxed, of course, in England. Oh, it was kind of common. Everything's taxed in England. Yeah, yeah, everything's taxed in England. So what 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 this rebellion look like? What did these people within the United States of America, the 13 counties, what did they do when George's boys were knocking on the door saying, I want money? 
Well, they would uh, actually oppose them with uh, with their own weapons. And they fought them. They would tar and feather them. Hmm. They would show them in no uncertain terms that they did, were not welcome in the state of Pennsylvania or the Allegheny uh, Valley. Sure. So, so, so we got to the point where they uh, were in such opposition that they were called a rebellion. And uh, George Washington uh, pro proclaimed the emergency that required the uh, formation of uh, the militias of the surrounding states uh, to, uh, to be assembled so that he could lead them against this whiskey rebellion. Hmm. He... Uh, is reported to have gotten enough people to, so that he had more uh, militia people, more militia men, formed up against the Whiskey re Rebellion than he ever commanded in uh, in the Revolutionary War. He had 13,000 no, no militiamen kidding. arrayed against the uh, rebellion. Why? Why? How could you get 13,000 people... These were not people. These were armed, uh, ar ar armed uh, soldiers. Where did he get those? From the, from the states. He proclaimed that there was an emergency because there was a, a rebellion, <laughs> a, a, the whiskey rebellion. But but didn't these thirteen thousand know that George had no right to be taxing these people? George Washington was revered as the as the hero of the revolution. He, he was the president. Right. No one had any idea what he had done. But they, they certainly knew that they weren't supposed to be taxed on this, the, these like Pennsylvania, the in the part of the uh, United well, States. Well, the, the government had had been in had been in business for almost four years, right? And they had been doing this, and no one had complained. Uh, the uh, the federal tax collectors were being uh, shot at and tarred and feathered and <laughs> abused. Yeah. And so the the militia were were staunchly uh uh defenders of the uh, of the community. So they thought the community was being uh uh overthrown. And so and so George Washington had called upon them to save the save the nation. So it was a big deal. It was uh, they, were, they were patriots. They thought they were patriots. Because hmm. no one really understood the law. Wow. So no different from today when you have conflict and wars where people will fight, but they don't really get it, that what they're fighting for or, or who's in charge and what the deal is. Yeah, look, looking back at, it, uh, at that situation, you can tell today, oh, this is easy. This is really simple to understand. There's, there's the law. Mm -hmm. There's the limitations on, on the uh, government. Mm-hmm. And so the, peop the people that uh, participated in the Whiskey Rebellion were the heroes. They were the, <laughs> the, the real patriots. <laughs> and the government was, of course, uh, abusive, Yeah, overstepping their bounds. No different from today where, God love them, you, you, the people talk about people going into Iraq or Afghanistan or, or Libya, and they're, they're deemed as heroes when they, you know, in my opinion, have no right to be there. Just a political statement there. It's uh, 20, uh, 32 after the hour. So we're going to take a break, but here's the key before. If I understand then, if we just understand this simple idea of the United States, the United States of America being separate and who is authority. So when the federal government goes into California and, say, tells them, for example, hmm, you can't have these medical marijuana places, like you guys wanted to and voted like they're doing today, right? They're telling them to close them down because it's just too messy. They're doing this all under the guise that these medical marijuana places in Los Angeles County are part of the United, are part of the United States of America because that's the only place they have authority. No, no. Remember, the United States of America is a confederacy and is also considered where everybody lives. And that, is not, and that the United States of America is not owned by the United States of America, which is the Confederacy. Remember, there's a political entity, and then there's the place. Right. It's, so so yeah. to, to disguise that, what they do is they, they, they abbreviate the United States of America as 
U, capital U period, capital S period. Right. And so when you see that in government paperwork, that's what they're doing. They're, 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 they're saying the United States of America is the U.S., so the U.S. government is the Confederacy. So when you see that in print, that's what they're, that's what they're talking about. They're, they're, this is a code that you have to break out. Okay, so, so walk us through. I'm going to delay the break. Uh, walk us through what might be happening, say, for example, in California and the medical marijuana things and how they're uh, tricking the people into believing they have authority. Well, the only thing they're doing is saying that the United States, that they have control over the United States, and they, they, they spell out the United States. Uh, and, of course, that's true, the United States being the territory that is owned by the United <laughs> States of America. Right. Okay. So their real authority is, is that that's the real authority. Right. People confuse the United States with where they are, non-government which, land. Which is non-governmental so, land. Yeah, yeah. So, so that the, place, that Maryland. Part, the, the, uh, military bases are all owned by the United States of America. But not this little medical marijuana place in. But not where you live. Or not where you live or I live. The marijuana plant is selling their. Mm-hmm. Their, their their product. It's not. We don't live in the United States. You don't live in the United States, and it's very easy to 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 start taking this thing apart because the whole system is based upon being convicted by a jury. And in order to be a juror, a federal juror, you've got to live on that land, federal land. Huh. Well, that's that's all. All jurors have to be. Uh, of the land where the crime was committed. So they claim that... They can't import jurors from out of state <laughs> to try people in, in, a, in, a, in another state. So they claim that this medical uh, hypothetical mar- medical marijuana place in, Cal- in Los Angeles County is in the United States when it's not. So if they took these people to court, the jury... The jury would also have to live in the United States, yeah, which they yeah. don't, and, and, which they don't. And the and the states work the same way because because uh, what what California has done is that in California it's not illegal to use mar- medical marijuana provided you have a prescription, right? So the the state the government in California can't charge you with with uh, using marijuana if you if you satisfy their rules because that's that's the law. But the law is really limited. That law is limited to federal territory. So it, it, it's in direct conflict with hmm. the federal law. Hmm. So, so the federal law is supposed to be supreme. Yeah. But it is supreme, but it's limited to the federal territory. Federal it's territory. Supreme. And and where is federal territory? Just broad strokes. Well, here in, in, uh, in Los Angeles County, it's the Veterans Administration Hospital in West Los Angeles. And the... Uh, National Forest, Los Padres National Forest. Mm-hmm. That's the, those are the main areas of federal territory where the federal government owns the land. That's the only place they have authority. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating, folks? So, so if President Obama or somebody in Washington comes out with a mandate or this or that, saying you got to do this or that, the only place they have real constitutional lawful authority is on territory owned by the United States of America called the United States, which is federal land. Yeah. That's, Period. That's, that's, that's it. Period. End of story. Okay, you sit with that for a second, and I know, just wrap up your head with duct tape, but, I mean, isn't it good to know this, even if you never do anything? California, Dr. Ed Rivera was nice enough to get up early this morning, got a little cup of coffee, get his brain going. How is this information going to be valued? I mean, what's the point of of understanding? I mean, it's a dumb question. I mean, but how, in, in practical terms, how are some of your students using this information? Well, they're actually learning the law. Yeah. We, we, we believe the law to be uh, applicable to where we live. And all you have to do is, is learn that the law applies to a place where where you don't live, <laughs> now, it's not it's not it's not a question of changing anything. It's just really understanding. Understanding, it. yeah, yeah. You don't have to change anybody or convince anybody of anything, do no. you? No. 
No, and you do that historically because it, it started that way and it can't change. You, you can't become uh, something that it hasn't started out as. And uh, so George Washington was a dictator. He, mm -hmm. he, traditionally what a dictator does is just assumes the, the, the mantle of leadership of the country and uh, takes power over the, uh, the government, including the military. That's what the, that's what the president is. He's in charge of the government and in charge of uh, and the military and the head of the state. And that's that's happened ever since uh, George Washington, right? Every every president. Exactly. Before that, uh, it was not like that. the The government was separate. The government was barely acted uh, at all because it was, because the people were in charge of their own lives. They governed themselves. Now you can't govern yourself because the government wants to step in and t tell you what to do. But it's tell you how much soda to drink and when to drink it. But it's not, it's not, and none of it's lawful. It is lawful in where they own the property. Oh, only where they own the property. Yeah, so you have to give them their due. Yeah, yeah, you can, guys, yeah. But they don't you own the property of some... them yeah. their power, but their power is limited to what they own because... When the when the king gave up the uh, the fight and uh, and the land that he that the king owned in America, he uh, he gave up his governmental power. Well, the governmental power was gone when he lost the war, hmm. and uh, and the troops were uh, defeated. He lost his government power, but he he retained the proprietary power over this land that called the Northwest Territory. So that is what the government has been using to govern, proprietary power, power over land. But they only, they only have power over the land that they own. <laughs> Fascinating. Now, you, you're trained as an attorney, right? Yeah. And, and you practice law what years? From 1972 until 2006. And why do you no longer practice law officially in the courts? Because you can't tell the people the truth and, and remain part of the government. <laughs> the, uh, gov lawyers are part of the government. They're part of the government. I thought they were just private guys out there practicing law. Well, remember, the, this, the, the, the government is private because <laughs> the, Constitution, uh, uh, the, 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 the Constitution of September 17, 1787 hasn't been adopted. You've got to take an oath to, to obey this Constitution and no one, no one's done that. That's that's what that's the the basic trick. That's a trick. So this two hundred twenty five years ago yesterday, the Constitution of September seventeenth, seventeen eighty seven, no president to this day have ever said I adopt this Constitution. Well, they, they these people were very clever, and you yeah. don't adopt it just by saying adopted. You adopt it by taking an oath to support this Constitution, well, not the Constitution of the United States. See, hmm. what George Washington does is, is adopt a, a, a constitution that is different from this constitution, from the constitution of September 17th, 1787. What he's doing, he's adopting the constitution of the property yes. that is owned by the United States of America. He's preserving, protecting, and defending the property that belongs to the United States of America. And that's all Barack Obama or anybody else have ever done. That's right. You, when you see him on TV taking an oral oath, what's yeah. an oral oath? You can take oral oaths all day, and it doesn't matter. All you all you've said is, "I promise." Yeah, sure, I promise. I'll promise again. Yeah, I messed up, but I'll promise again. <laughs> That's all he does. That's all presidents do is promise to do stuff, and never uh, n never accomplish anything because they're they're not bound. They're not bound. bound by by a written document. You have to sign it, and wow. that's never been done. No one's ever done it. No member of Congress, no judge has ever bound, be bound, have been bound to support this Constitution. It's just a matter of words, and all the words are, are in plain sight and been there for 225 years. So, so you, can't, you, you know, people say, oh, we should string these guys up and put them in the Hague and try them for treason and all that. Uh, sounds to me like, no, because they've never done anything wrong because they're just it's just an illusion that's right that's right they're 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 getting away with murder because uh there's there's no law against it <laughs> now folks in case you think 
Well, why are you talking about this here? 2012, look at the Northwest Ordinance 225 years ago. It doesn't matter. that these, these are just old pieces of paper. Well, not so. Right here in my hands, I have the United States Code, 2006 edition, right? And right in the very front of it, and this is, uh, the United States Code is the real deal, right? This is what they go by? Everybody goes by? That's their printed law. And you open up the, the, the cover and you look in the law and this is the law. This is the law. The law. And guess what they have at the very beginning is the four organic laws of the United States. Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, Northwest Territory Ordinance, and Constitution of the United States. Right in the United States Code. I mean, if the Northwest Ordinance and the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence didn't matter, why would they have it in the United States Code? It tells you where the law is the law. And that's really what no one wants you to know. <laughs> they, they, want to, they want to govern uh, just by... Uh, Everybody, uh, right? Uh, and uh, yeah. force. Okay, let's take this email. Good morning, Patrick. Would you please ask Dr. Rivera these several questions. We'll take them one at a time. What are the geographical boundaries of the United States of America? Geographical boundaries of the United States of America. Well, it's, it's the 50 states plus what they own or they control. So it's, it's the United States of America is everything. Everything. Yeah. Including yeah. Virgin Islands, Guam and all that? That's right. That's but right. it's just geographical. It's got nothing to do with... It's got nothing to do with power. With power. That's called the United States of America. Yeah. What, and his second question, what are the territorial boundaries of the United States? That's what the United States of America owns. Okay. So if it's got a fence around it or it's big and uh, hmm. like the, uh, the Virgin Islands, and it's all the Virgin Islands and it's all the Puerto Rico... They control that because they're the they're the government there. They own it. Yeah. They, now they may have a lesser government. They have a state government, but that state government is operating under the auspices of of the 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 federal government, the United States of America. Um, do the people, free inhabitants in the United States of America, are they the ultimate owners of Virgin Island and Guam, and also the bases, or does this government own it if the if the government were to be totally unraveled it would go back to the people and they would have to figure out another way another government to, to own collectively ah, okay. what was owned by before by the uh, confederacy third question what's the difference between u.s u, u, capital u dot s and u.s without the dots and united states and united states of america capitalized so that's pretty complicated but He's got United States with the capital U, capital S, and the United States small U and S. Well, I does don't think the small, the lowercase U and S are, mean anything. Doesn't matter. No, that doesn't matter. But the capital U period, capital S period, right. stands for the United States uh, of America. When you see it in uh, regulations or you see it in, uh, uh, in the law books. Because it they have to make a distinction between the United States, your capital U, and then the lowercase mm -hmm. spelling of the state and states and the United. Um, but when we see capital U, capital S, um, we're tricked into believing that that's the territory that is owned and governed by the United States of America. Yeah, well, okay. that's what that usually really means is that it's the United States of America. You can see that in the past. The, the easiest way to look at it is it is in the passport uh, regulations, the passport law, oh. and the uh, passport uh, regulations for getting the passport. Because what the what what the passport law says is that the only people who are entitled to a passport are U.S. nationals, U.S. nationals, U. period, S. period, nationals. Those are, that's the only people entitled to a passport? Yeah, well, that's everybody. That's everybody. Everybody that's in the United States of America, including the people in the Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So, everybody there, that's the free inhabitants. 
all the free inhabitants are entitled to passports. So free inhabitants, you and I are U.S. But when they make, when, when they make their regulations, it, it makes it appear as if only uh, U.S. citizens, but U.S. means United States of America citizens. Not United States citizens. Yeah, and so you still don't have to be a citizen, but in order, to, what they consider a citizen is somebody who owes allegiance to the United States of America. Boy, so, that's tricky, man. That yeah. is tricky. Wow. Uh, it's, it's like deciphering a code. <laughs> it's like the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. His last question, how does the state of California fit in the boundaries of California and fit in the boundaries of California? Well, that's how, exactly how do we, it. How do it, we it, figure that out, he says? Boundaries of California. Say it's that again. California, mm -hmm. which is the golden state, is bounded on the, on the west by the Pacific Ocean and then on, 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 the, on the east by states. Right. So that's California. The state of California is the is the government, uh, and the territory is the uh, territory that's owned by the United States of America. Oh. Yosemite, the national parks. Right. So so there's California, then there's the state of California, and this happens for all states. State of Texas. They're Tex all the same. The state, They're all the same. So so that state of California or state of Texas is only federal land for the the territorial part every every state has to have a piece of territory and so that's that supplies the territory I'm, i lost you there every state has to uh, have... in, in order to in order to to have a state uh, the, the, the what are the new states the the, the, the some of the african states uh, the uh, uh antarctica on it could never be a state because it doesn't have any population so mm -hmm. you have to have three things you have to have population you have to have some kind of legal system and then you have to have territory. That's a state. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people just organize into into groups so that they can do business and and uh, live live peacefully to, together. So, they have to do that on a piece of ground. So that's the territory. <laughs> so, uh, the state of California has to have some territory in order to be a state or a political state. And so that territory is supplied by the federal government. So when I look at my deed of trust and they say that my home is located in the state of Texas, they trick me into believing that it is, but it's not really. No, it's not in the state of Texas. It's in Texas. Yeah, well, they say it's the state of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's... Yeah, because so they want authority over it. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, why they prop that's why they do the property tax. That's how they do property tax. Because <laughs> they get you, trick you into believing that the house is in the state of Texas when it's in, not in the state of Texas, it's in Texas. Well, somewhere on that on on your grant deed or warranty deed, whatever kind of deed you had, yeah, it's gonna they, they'll say send the send the deed send the tax bill to your new address, hmm. the address of this new owner, and of course that's what they do. They send you a tax bill, and then you <laughs> and then you pay it. <laughs> you pay it. <laughs> Instead of challenging it and saying, "Look, I don't know anything," I don't know. Anything. Here's a here's an email from Steve in Tampa, Florida. Andrew Goss, uh, who's a regular guest on our show, at times has mentioned an old way to own your land outright with a special deed. I can't think of the name of the action. Does Mr. Rivera know what I'm asking about? Well, ownership is, is a claim. You have a claim that's better than anybody else. And so the, so all, all, all that uh, uh, your title is is a... a uh, collection of those claims of those evidences of your ownership of your of your title so the easiest way to do it would be to publish it on the internet because everything now everything on the internet is there forever not uh, not uh, through the government but the government has claimed well if you register it with us then everybody knows that uh, that you are the owner so it's a, it's going to be a competition between what is the best way of, of of informing others of your claim to this particular piece of property. You know, you put up a fence, you 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 own it outright, and you, you know, your your ownership is notorious to everybody else's claims. Nobody else questions it. Your neighbors all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep off your grass. And so, so do you feel like someday creative people will be able to? not be subject to property tax because they can, 
Well, I guess they can if they're... Well, they're not subject to property tax now. It's a yeah, voluntary yeah. thing. It's a voluntary thing because they don't live in the state of California or the state of Texas, so they, the county doesn't own the land. You're not subject to the, that law. No. Remember, uh, the law has a ter- territorial component. Of course, if you don't pay your taxes, you know, they'll just put a lien and sell your house. Well, that's a matter of force. Oh, it's by force. Yeah, it's by force. Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with now. If, if people didn't believe that they were getting something from the state, you see... People buy it at a, at, a, at a tax sale because they think they have they can get good title. Mm-hmm. Well, the state is no more than a thief, and you can't get title from a thief. Oh, so when people go to buy these kind of properties on the courthouse steps that are being hmm, taken because people don't pay property taxes, they don't really have clear title anyway. No. Yeah, no, because, yeah that's, that's one of the reasons so, why they had the uh, Shays Rebellion before that they prompted the, uh, the Constitution. Hmm. Wow. So there are a lot of rebellions that were put down by the government so that the government could control. Yeah. Yeah. So President Obama, what is he anyway? Is he, what, what is he law? I mean, what, 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 has he taken any kind head of, of... He's head of the state. He's head of the United States of America, the Confederacy. Okay. He's commander in chief mm. because, of, because of that office. Mm-hmm. And then he's president of the United States, which is commander in chief of the uh, the United States uh, military forces, and uh, he's head of the government or that uh, that rules the federal territory. Okay, but they, it goes beyond that because now they because they they, they, they everybody believes that the the. Uh, uh, Federal agencies extend beyond federal territory. They can, they can sure, tell you, sure, sure, sure. So, you, what, you know, the, hmm. so the FDA or somebody can come in and say you can't drink raw milk in Wisconsin, and they have absolutely no authority there. No, no None authority at all. No, no, no. They do it because they can, right? They got. They bad- do it because people believe them. Yeah, they got guns and badges, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so so President Obama and all the presidents, I guess they it's almost like being a dictator when you just have all these titles. It is and, being a dictator. I mean, it's just it's it's like phew. that's what that's what that's what <laughs> that's what uh, Adolf Hitler did. Is he combined the he became chancellor, yeah, which is head of the government, yeah, and then when Paul Hindenburg died, he took over that position, yeah, and and then lumped it he consolidated it into the Führer, the leader. But that's all he did was combine the head of state, uh, the head of, head of state of, of Germany with the head of the government, a position he already had, and became dictator. So all dictators are the same. Yeah, so, so they'll write an executive order uh, and just write it and sign it and, and uh, claim authority over all the land, all the people, just because they can and just because they have people that will come and give you a hard time if you don't say yes. Yeah, well, in in America, the 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 chief executive is only head of what the the government owns. Right. So it's the the, the dictator, dictatorial part of it that makes it extend beyond that. Right. But that's how it's done. Because two two people two persons cannot should not hold the same office, or or these two offices they should not hold them together. Sure, the president of the United States and the president of the United States uh, of America. Yeah. Yeah. No one really knows that that's the no, case. No. That they're the same because George Washington was the same guy. This is, this is the same office. There's one office. <laughs> they can't make the distinction. If you were on a game show and you had to guess, and I we got to go here because we're late, but and you had to guess the percentage of people in government that mm, that really understands what you've just said this last hour, what would you guess? Just if you had to make a guess. Oh, it'd be pretty close to zero. Really? I don't think anybody understands it. Even President Obama? Even President Obama. You, you, it's, it's like being able to walk and chew gum at the same time. How, how can you have all these ideas in, in, in your head and, and be able to think properly? You have to choose one road or the other. Yeah. If okay, you you're, you're the right guy. Road, you're yeah. not going to be in office. <laughs> you're the guy. Just do what you want and uh, try to stay in for as long as you yeah. can. Yeah. Well, Dr. Rivera, it's fascinating, and I appreciate our listeners who kind of waited through this, but we have you on from time to time because 
uh, people love it and, and they, they hear these things and they play the podcast and they go, what? Come on. But you can play it back over and over and uh, become a student if you'd like to and learn more. And who knows where this is all going, but we appreciate your dedication and your passion and you're, you're a hero. You're my hero. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Rivera.